Well, that game pretty much went exactly how everyone thought it was going to go. I was a little bit hopeful going in, thinking we might see something a little bit different, a few new combinations, something might work, a little bit of a direction where we're going. But I've come away from watching that game, and I just think there's way more questions than answers getting from that. Um, South Africa were utterly dominant from start to finish. And to be honest, they were pretty poor by their standards. There was a lot of mistakes, bad discipline, and they could have run up an even bigger score than they did on Wales. Uh, Wales' only score was from a South African mistake. Um, we've got into a habit when we've managed to get onto the five metre line recently and mauled over that we've seemed to be getting held up a lot. I know that's just the nature of the rules, but it seems to be happening a lot to us. It seems to be happening a lot more than uh, happens to other teams, but... I don't know, you just come away from that game and you think, what, what is the plan? What is the strategy? What is Gatland trying to do with squad selection? And why can we only go one or two phases before we kick the ball away or, or lose it? You had experiments where you had Grady at 12 and Watkin at 13. And I don't think that worked. They were using Grady as a first-time carrier which is what you, I guess, you wanted to. But there's no deception. They're just giving it to him on a flat ball, and he's having a run-up, and he's just hitting a brick wall. And this happened throughout the game. There was no deception in the, the Welsh attack. They're running into the uh, South African line with no options of anything around them. It's just one up, and the South Africans are just waiting there, and that's just, you're playing into their hands, aren't you? Um, the first 20 minutes were basically exactly what we th were thought it could be and what we were hoping it wasn't going to be and you could just see the South Africa were just after it and they were trying to push things and up the tempo and stuff like that and I was thinking god this is going to be a real long afternoon the the first try was just poor they, they just had an overlap outside there was no sort of interplay or anything that created it they just went wide and just beat us on the outside the organisation in the defence was, was rubbish. And then we got to like the 20 minute mark and they started to uh, get back into the game a little bit. Actually, up the physicality, the defence was a bit better. South Africa were making mistakes, which was giving us opportunities to uh, get the ball a bit. We weren't really doing anything with the ball, but we were just keeping, actually keeping South Africa from not scoring anymore um, we had a kick to the corner and the the, the line was pretty good throughout particularly when lake was on um, and ironically the one time where the line misfired is when lake ended up scoring in the corner so i'm quite happy with how the line out functioned in general um, but then the scrum was just such an issue it's been an issue through the whole six nations now um, the fact that Henry Thomas was out of the the squad for for an injury. We knew it was going to be difficult, and we knew that was going to make things difficult, and it was going to be hard then anyway. And then you just saw it like it was just no contest. There was a couple of times where probably before it would have been a penalty, but the refs are trying to let the scrums go a little bit more now. If the ball's there to be played, they're letting the ball go away, and I think that probably saved Wales a couple of times. Azarati had a torrid time. Um, Gareth Thomas had a good game around the pitch but at scrum time he's just been found wanting this last entire season and um, what where's the improvements going to come you, you had the likes of Matthias and O'Connor coming off the bench and it just got worse if it could if it could have and it's just you start to worry now of what what can you possibly do you could bring like the likes of Domachowski in who's been good this season but his scrummage is not markedly above Gareth Thomas. Um, so I really don't know what we're going to do in that that sense of things. Um, once we hit half-time, we were sort of still in the game. Again, it was mainly through South Africans' mistakes. But as soon as the second half came, they just sort of started cleaning it up a bit, took it up a gear, and um, yeah, they just ran out comfortable winners. Um I'm not going to go through the whole game because it was it's just, just pointless. There's nothing to really talk about of the Wales side of things. So uh, there was a couple of things I, miss, I wrote down. Um, Costello's confidence 
looks shot to me uh, and it's not his fault it's just the situation he's been put in he's just not he's just it's just not there at the moment especially with his kicking um like the the one he missed early on in front of the post that was the exact same kick that he missed um in the scarlets against the dragons game that cost him the game and his com- i just think his confidence is just not there uh, and that's when he's good when he's just feeling like he's flowing and he's just doing what he wants um, that's when you see the best of him and we haven't seen that for Wales and it's not necessarily his fault it's the team in general I thought the two locks went pretty good uh, without setting the world on fire but they got through a lot of work I thought Screech was alright Ben Carter was definitely the pick of the locks um, but I didn't think Screech let him down he didn't necessarily look out of place uh, when you consider who he's up against is and in, in, in his opposite opposition um the back row was was fairly quiet uh Wainwright did his best to do Wainwright stuff and he got us going forward a couple of times he was injecting a bit of pace into the attack but again it's just one up run as one man he can't do it all on his own um both of them had a workman like performance but never really I mean, he's generally been a jackal threat throughout the season for Cardiff and you didn't really see him on the ball once. And um, Plumtree was just eh, so-so. Didn't really notice him at all. Um, uh, uh, Bevan really impressed me, to be fair. I didn't expect him to be in the squad, really, if I'm totally honest from the start. Um, And then to see him starting, uh, but he looked comfortable. He didn't look out of place. And even though we kicked it way more than we probably should have or what, what, way more than we wanted to, I thought his kicking was generally good. One or two were a little bit too long, but quite a few were good and contestable. And he looked comfortable and um, he was getting around the, the, the park and in, in defence he was making tackles and stuff. So I think, don't be surprised if he starts now in Australia and Gatlin just goes well, he's young he's the new guy we're just going to give him an opportunity and see if he can go forward with it because with all due respect when Gareth Davis came on it probably looked a little bit worse it looked a little bit slower and it just wasn't as crisp not that there was a massive drop but you would have thought like a player of his caliber coming on he would take it up a notch but he definitely didn't and as much as I love him I just think he had the World Cup where he was excellent and then the Six Nations he's just had a massive decline since and um, yeah I just don't think he's at, at the races anymore uh, which is unfortunate uh, I spoke about the centre partnership I don't think it worked particularly in defence they were getting mixed up quite a bit and it's, it's natural Grady has never started a game in that position um, and I think Owen Watkin is better at 12 because he's not that pacey uh, and he's a good talker so he can uh, Marshall and stuff like that but I, sometimes it felt like they were taking each other's men both going for the same people at one point they crossed and Watkin came in and Grady went out and it ended up uh, c- causing an overlap um, and Grady was found out quite a few times just being like picked out in the back line and he has improved since coming back from the Six Nations where he's been playing more outside centre he's definitely improved with his defensive reads um, which is why I don't, I don't know, like putting him into 12 and then making him learn a whole new thing again. It just didn't work. Um, Liam Williams on the one wing was pretty solid. Those uh, kicks that a lot of people were saying Wales were going to employ uh, once or twice. There was a few good ones where he was getting up and winning the ball in the air. He's so good at that. Um, but he didn't get an opportunity to attack. There was one or two. He had that good interception, which eventually led to the bit of a knock on. Um, but that was basically it. We had no ball. No ball went wide. Um, and then Dyer was... Well, that was probably the worst game for Wales. We've see, I've seen him. Again, defensive frailties uh, with his tackling. It's just not on song. And um, he didn't really have the ball to do anything. And Winnett didn't have the ball once in attack that I can think of. Um, and he was great under the high ball, as he always is. But in, in attack, he just didn't have anything... Uh, so yeah I hate sounding so absolutely down in the dumps and like uh, negative but I don't really know what else to say it's quite worrying now when we've seen no improvement since the start of the Six Nations to now even though he's had them in camp for a couple of days um, there's been no improvement and it's actually looking 
maybe even worse than it did before because we don't know what they're trying to do what are they trying to achieve there's nothing going on and i know in this game we were uh, hamstrung slightly by the lack of availability from the english players so you're gonna get the you know like dav jenkins and that coming back in but it's not gonna be like you know five or six world-class players coming back in it's a couple of players who are going to improve the team but it's not going to be a massive difference and that's i mean it's it's really really concerning um and i just don't know where gatland is going or where his coaching team is going with this uh, we just got to hope now over the next couple of weeks that they manage to fine-tune some sort of game plan where it's cohesive and everyone's on the same page and everyone's in the defence the same way and uh, hope that he can pull something out but at the moment I mean it's looking really really shaky um, The the I forgot to mention Derry Lake I thought was outstanding he did really put in a skipper's performance today and he was one of the few players that really had an impact on the game for Wales obviously he got his try but when he had a few carries which weren't as many as we'd like to see him he was actually getting over the game line and making uh, noticeable uh, uh, differences in attack. So and his darts were good. Um, so he can be happy with his performance. Um, yeah, I mean, in his interview after the game, he said he was happy with the boys' effort. And I don't think there was a lack of effort there, but it's just a lack of just complete cohesion and what's what's going on. And I mean, that last try it was the last try from the winger. I think it was Van der Merwe where he just basically takes the ball at first receiver by the ruck and just steps inside, and he goes straight through. You had Matthias, who overchased initially and then didn't come in as a pillar, just stayed in the middle of the ruck. And then uh, O'Connor, who was the guard, pushed out way too quick, and then the winger just comes through the gap. Mackenzie Martin tried to make a last-ditch tackle across Harry O'Connor, but... I mean, he's never going to make it from there. So I'm just a bit, a little bit despondent. Don't really know what to say. Uh, I'd like to know what you guys thought of watching this. It was basically what exactly what we thought was going to happen, except South Africa were a little bit more uh, loose with the ball than they usually were. And I think that probably saved us once or twice uh, with a few knock-ons and a few penalties and stuff like that. Um before I do finish, though, I did want to talk about this Sam Harry incident thing that's been doing the rounds yesterday or the day before. Um, apparently, Sam Harry has left the squad by his own decision because he said he felt disrespected. Now, I was reading what this was, what was said, but by all accounts, he got brought into the squad. And, and funny enough, when they announced the squad, I said... When I saw there was four hookers, I said, how are they deeming Sam Harry, Harry is good enough to be in the squad now when they deemed he wasn't good enough like three months before uh, to even get on the bench when we had no hooker cover, which I thought was weird. And then apparently he's coming to camp this time and they basically just used him as a camp body, which is, you got to have camp bodies in a, in a big squad. I mean, you always see when they talk about the Lions, they always say, it's the players who are not involved are just as important because you've got to have that intensity in training and the standards and stuff like that. I totally understand. It sucks to be a camp body. I've been there when I was playing, even though I was playing at a terrible level. But like I've been just one of those people who goes training and he's never going to get into the team. It sucks, but you have to have the standards. But as long as the coach keeps you involved in everything that's going on and you feel part of the squad, then you just have to deal with it. But apparently he's coming to the squad. They didn't give him all of the kit because they de deemed that he wasn't going to be there for the whole tour. And then they were not basically involving him in anything to do. They were talking about, like, with the hookers, what was going to be going on. And then they were just sort of, he was an afterthought. And they were like, oh, yeah, and you, you'll just do that. And uh, apparently he said he felt so disrespected that he just left the squad. But are we in, like, Division 5... East West or something like this and the committee are picking the team or something like that. What's what is going on? This is just it's getting really hard. I'm I'm one of those people who always defends Warren Gatland and I've defended him just the whole time. I was so happy when he came back, even though I thought 
it's never going to be as good as it was before. But the more stuff that's coming out now, it feels like he's starting to lose control and he's starting to lose the team because you can be um, like a, a like harsh and like stern and stuff like that with the players when you're doing well. But when you're doing bad, they start turning on you and it feels like it's, it's getting to that point at the moment. He's always been said that he's a really good man man manager but at the moment like stories like this coming out are so such a bad luck on him and his staff and when you think now um we've got Elias who's not gonna go and D who's out of the tour through injury so Parry would have been the third uh hooker along with Evans uh no Evan Lloyd and Derry Lake now we've got Derry Lake and Evan Lloyd, who's had three caps and about six or seven games for Cardiff, hardly any minutes, only started like two or three games. And then he's called up Evan Daniel, who was the other player who was competing with Evan Lloyd to be second choice hooker in Cardiff. So you've got Derry Lake, who's been injured all year, and then Cardiff's second and third choice hooker. What are we doing? Like what? What are we doing here? It's you can't tell me that Evan Daniel is better than Sam Parry. Like you can't. No one can tell me that because he's just not. Like I don't think Sam Parry is the type of player who's gonna uh, have a little paddy because he's he's not involved in the match day squad. He's been around the block. He's been a long time. He's had quite a long journey in his career where he struggled to find like form and find a team, and now he's really settled in at the Ospreys and he's playing the best rugby of his career. And then you're just discarding him completely because you just deem he's not worthy of being in the squad. But I don't know. It's just, my head is just like completely going with it at the moment. Um, I'm finding it really hard to be positive on this channel. I hate doing negative uh, like talk on you, but I'm just finding it so difficult now. And it's really hard to like defend what Gatlin's doing at the moment because it just seems like it's such a mess in there. But... We'll see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what the Australia tour holds. And I'd like to know your thoughts. And I'll catch you on.